The crusade marches on, and so too must we. Do you suppose one of us can take down that cannon up there? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Is that thing? All right, fine. I'll do it by myself. Let's do it. I'll do it myself. I can't remember what the cannon was. Big Bertha, I believe, was the guy called the cannon for World War II. Uh, the uh, Germans on the rail line. Uh, the Gustav cannon, I think. The Gustav cannon? I think so. Maybe right. I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. Look, they have the same mining equipment as the Grubs from uh, Gears of War. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Focus, excuse me, brother. Close, close enough. I mean, that's their base unit name. It doesn't matter to anyone. How do the orcs have this information? How do they have this technology, even? That's a good point. How do they have that? Remember, they were built to be bioweapons. Does it ever tell you who built them? Uh, no. They speculate. The idea is that their creators were probably what are now remains of aggression. So the, the little guys that they uh, just exploited and used for food and creating landmines and hauling ammo, probably those guys. Oh, really? So they, they probably created and helped themselves with something in the war and then it backfired on them. No, it didn't backfire, it just held last of them. It took too long. It took too damn long. That's a good point. <laughs> well, because they were, if I remember correctly, they were built to combat the Necrons. And what better weapon to combat the Necrons than one that keeps replenishing itself? Never runs out of orcs. They don't, if I'm not mistaken, you told me the orcs uh, just are spores, correct? They're part plant, part fungoid hybrids, yes. They they release spores when they're alive. They release more spores when they die. Ah. So you leave a bunch of orcs dead in the field, you gotta have a whole bunch more orcs to deal with later on. Can't climb. Space Marines cannot climb objects. They're too can heavy. You, can you burn them? Spores? Yeah, of course. Well, could you bring the orcs so they don't release the spores? Yeah, you can, you can incinerate them, certainly. Just gotta make sure that all of them are dead. Oh, no, not a grenade. I hate grenades. Mr. Shooter, Buddha, Kabuda. So in the end, the orcs are the ultimate weapon that can never be defeated. Uh, they rank pretty high up there. For all of your other super weapon engines, and battle platforms, and stations, and ships, the orcs are a natural force. They accumulate numbers. As those numbers get stronger and stronger and stronger, they begin to unlock new uh, pathways within themselves. So you get more psychically active orcs, you get more combat orcs, you get leaders, and you get visionaries that unite the tribes together for a great crusade, a war, if you like. They're driven. They will get their job done. Except, of course, they do need leadership because when there's just orcs around, they will fight themselves. Now I was gonna, in, in the game, is it possible for you to replenish your forces with orcs? Like, if you die in over four or five turns, do you get like two or three orcs back? <laughs> no, it's uh, not quite that uh, fun. That'd be cool. If you, if you think of it, the floor and everything, that'd be kind of a... It'd be a fairly un it, an unfair advantage, I think. It would be unfair, but you gotta think, though, it'd be technically true. I mean, yes, it, you can also export by the best team you want by spending the most money. There wasn't a salary cap like in baseball. Right. But it might be unfair, but if it's the true definition of how the sports play, then what's wrong with it? <laughs> if both teams have infinite resources, why not see who's best at using them? Right? Correct. But, you know, like your space marines, you can't replenish the bodies. You might be able to get more ammo or better armor over time, but the orcs just get bodies. They might not improve their uh, mechanisms, their tanks, or anything like that. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to defeat them within so many turns of after defeating one of them or two of them. So if you blow you up You can orc set up scenarios that are not fair games where the orcs will keep being reinforced. You have to do what you got to do within a certain turn limit, otherwise your force is going to whittle down. Like beyond turn four or five, there's no point. Just too many orcs. You can do that for custom games, but for fair rules, no, it'd be too much of an advantage. Oh, I mean, yeah, if you're in a tournament or something, yeah, I wouldn't see it. But if you're like, hey, we're going to play a game of uh, tabletop... 40k lore, because by the, whatever standard book rules there are now, yeah. but we're going to do a custom match where, hey, now this time you... Uh, no, you, get, you got a good idea, absolutely. You can set it up however it is crunchy and fun. But for that, you need imagination. What do we have here? Pick up stalker bolts? I don't want a stalker bolt. I want a stalker bolt. Look at this damn thing. Stalker bolter. Looks like a uh, rivet gun. <laughs> yes! That's exactly what it is. It's just a really... Really big rivet gun. So I, uh, I look for a place that needs a rivet. 
like say a head or two, and then I put the rivet into it from far away. Good point. That's where the orcs breached the gun battery. We haven't been able to but make it. Is that it like a world them. cannon? No, just, aren't just a medium distance shelling device. You have survived this long on your own, Lieutenant. You have done well. This is 40k, man. Warfare on a scale you don't imagine yet. We will retake True. the gun. You will get your reinforcements. <laughs> Where this guy that we're playing is technically kind of a grunt unit. And those guys are what? Uh, shit stains mostly. Militia. Well, they're they're the standard imperial infantrymen. If you want to talk about infinite numbers, the imperial guard is all about infinite numbers. What's oh, that? Two million soldiers died. Send four million more. Yes, but over time you're going to run out of men. With the orcs, it's just the imperium is vast. Yes, arguably there are more orcs than men. But shh, shh, don't tell them that. Don't discourage the troops. Whoops. That's better. Just a big poppy shell. What's with the fist? What fist? The glowing fist in the bottom left? Yes. Well, that's the rage mode. What? And I forgot how to activate it, actually. <laughs> Maybe important later on. If we die, I'll take a look at it. But that's your God of War super time. Oh, really? Melee overcharge. Because apparently there are runes in your armor that allow you to... Actually, the purity seal you picked up. The, uh, the, the sigil of hate bound in wax, uh, burlap, and microfilament. That allows you to tap into your inner hatred and righteousness and channel the Emperor's very own power. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there's an evil form in the Space Marines? Not Chaos evil. Marines? Not evil, just uh, working for different management. Ah. Chaos in general is a, is a massive cosmic power in this world, but they also have corrupted uh, legions of Marines. Okay. Because they need physical presence, you know? Now, is that in the tabletop game? Yeah, of course. I'm just curious. There used to be, uh, I think two editions ago, there were uh, special blisters for Chaos Forces because the demons are timeless. So your demon models can be used in 40k or fantasy interchangeably. Wow. Didn't know that. Mm -hmm. the ca chaos knows no time. Chaos just knows chaos. If there's order anywhere, it's got to show up and do its thing. And you could call it evil somewhat fairly, but really it's just rampant energy. Given form in the material world, it's not supposed to be in the material world, but see these living beings keep having these delicious psychic signatures we call souls, and the spirits can't help themselves. They need some of that action. Huh. Things you learn. Yeah. It's evil to us because, you know, we don't want to die. That's understandable. But on absolute scale, I don't think it's evil. No. Just excess. Just too much. After all, one of the mortal cultures, the Eldar, created a chaos evil a prime god by just being a little bit too much on the party side. You partied so hard, you fucked up the cosmos for everyone else. That? Jesus. The only story more metal than that is that of Katamari. The game where you roll up a ball and... Yeah. Never played the game. Never played the game. Well, the game itself is fun, but uh, the, the, the plot, the reason you're doing all this, is because the king of all cosmos went on a bender drove his Cadillac around and wrecked up the universe. <laughs> it's like, okay, son, daddy's got a massive hangover, put everything back together, chop chop. I did not know that. Yep, that's the setup. Fun, another thing I learned today, nice. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty metal, like, hey, listen, my dad destroyed creation itself, I gotta put the sky back together real quick. Oh. Now who's got some bears? I need bears. Oh no. See, those guys, the Gretchen. That's all that remains of the engineering race. <laughs> it's kind of like laying there like a dead roach. Like, me. Yeah. Muscle spasms. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. Don't forget, dip, 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 dip. Uh, actually, can I even crouch? No, I don't think so. Nope. I'm walking cover. I don't crouch. <laughs> what is this crouching speak of? What is this cowardly tactic? The Codex Astartes does not... <laughs> well, actually, it does. It supports taking cover whenever possible. When you're facing mortal weapons, don't bother. When you're facing laser cannons or space toxins or psycho fuck missiles, yeah, maybe take cover. <laughs> Just maybe. Just maybe. Might not be a bad time to duck down real quick. What's the, uh, the but that's the one. But damn. Yeah, don't forget the finishers. It's kind of a, a dial a combo system for Dynasty Warriors, and I'm very okay with that. Remember to execute when appropriate. Yes! What'd you do? 
do? Oh, just the the, the, the blood blossom they spit ah. on the screen. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was it or you did something like special. I was like, did, did, you, did you hit something special that I missed? <laughs> uh, just his face. Oh, okay, gotcha. I hit it so hard it went aerosol. Kinda like uh, on the evil within. Just... Kinda, yeah, but no bullets. That was a fist. Yeah. But it didn't come out of his chest either. Nope. Oh, sorry, we can't proceed until that's done. <laughs> Sir? Uh, I don't want to deal with you anymore. Just rip him in half. It's fine. Oh, there we go. The door clicked. What lucky timing. I wonder what that is. Damn, you know, years later, it still looks pretty damn good. It's pretty nice, yeah. Crisp as well. Oh, five, six years old? Just about, if you look it up. I played this first time on the PS3, so a little while ago. God. Yeah, going back to that at 720p, not fun. Not <laughs> fun. I picked up a few games uh, for super cheap, like Stranglehold and uh, Fuse for like four bucks a piece, and I'm kind of dreading getting into them again because I want to see it, but I have to brace myself. All right, here we got another demo segment that they cut together for this game before it was out. This is a much heavier drop pod, but it's not quite uh, dreadnought size, so it's not dropping down a piece of uh, sentient equipment. Apparently, it's dropping down just junk packs to be recovered later. So now we take to the skies as a walking man tank. Now, if we had editing software, it would be yeah. the perfect time to enter the song Jump Around. <laughs> <laughs> we can maybe do a segment of jumping around. Yes. Just hold space and start destroying everything. Now, is this the fluid space that falls in on Garen Logan, or is this... No, the Chaos Marines are that technology. Ah, okay. It's pretty sweet. Holy crap. Yeah, it, it, he weighs about three ton, let's say, and that can propel him up in the sky. Consider that. Three tons? How's he not broken in half? How's he, he not broken in No, no, he, him and his armor, completely. Yeah, but how's he not broken from carrying all that armor? He's post-human. Post-human? And, and it's uh, powered armor as well. Ah. So there's, there's some help involved. Gotcha. But... If you remember, in the opening cutscene of Dawn of War, um, that marine that rushes up the hill yeah. with his power pack being detonated, or gone, he carried all that. He ran in his depowered armor. Holy crap. Yeah, just shoulder rush. That's... A person would have died. This orc whoever is like, no, I'm good. Don't worry about me, bro. I said, don't worry about me. No! Where'd his head go before you cut him in half? Bolt. So you said he was a dehuman? Post-human. Post-human. That was different. Uh, okay. Remember how the space marines are made? No. But when a mama space marine and a daddy space marine love each other very much... Yes. Well, actually, when, when a, uh, a crop world human and his mate love each other very much, they send their children to the offering trials, however, however they're done on their world, to compete against the environment or each other or both. So you take, let's say, 50 exceptional people. The best of the best that they can provide. And you have them compete against each other until about 10 or May, right? Yeah. And when those 10 are done, the Space Marines will take up, the recruiters will take those to their facilities and begin the arduous process of uh, surgery, augmentation, psychoconditioning, and training. Now those 10, maybe two will make it. Ah. And you get two Space Marines. Because a lot of them just can't take the physical stress. They want the strongest possible individuals physically to survive the surgeries and augmentations. Like an extra lung, an extra heart, a vastly expanded chest cavity, uh, fibrous bone tissue that serves as quasi-armor inside your own flesh, coagulants, extra glands and stomach chambers so you can basically eat rocks for sustenance if you need to. Like, these are very different from human beings on the inside. Yeah, sure. Besides okay. just being huge. Oh, yeah. they can sleep and still remain wakeful. What? Yeah. They're like, uh, what is it, dolphins? A little bit. Battle dolphins. So these guys are like the marine, not, not marines. So, uh, <laughs> They're like the they, Doomslayer. They, uh, Doomslayer or like the Spartan soldier of uh, 40k. You know, we used to get in this debate all the time, and I still maintain that these guys beat Spartans handily. Oh, yeah, no, they Equipment would. or no. But oh, they, yeah, because they're... Well... I'm saying they're, they're the soldier type. Yes. Of uh, a ancient history, Spartans were the top of the top. You know, you had to go through trials and stuff. Kind of what they're doing. You can definitely tell probably whoever wrote the Space Marines or whoever created 40K probably took a uh, great deal in ancient history of the Spartans in some aspects. Likely. Well, I mean, these are even more than that. They're, they're like, combine those with monastery 
uh, knights or temple guard because like they the Teutonic knights or uh, knights templar. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. Like because the states, maybe those knights. The states. That's that's about right. Because these guys, a few chapters have a sense of joy about them, but most of them just serve grimly until they're dead. Like they understand that their life is completely, entirely in service. They probably will not die of old age. In fact, it's it's best that they don't. Huh. I mean, these are ones that take fatal injuries, like fatal fucking injuries, and either say, okay, graft on some more armor on me to make this work, or put me in a sarcophagus with Kansas cannon strapped to it, and let me be a dreadnought. Like, yeah, I should die, but I want to stay in service. Okay, what's a dreadnought again? A dreadnought is a mech chassis that is driven by a space marine whose body cannot support its functions anymore. So it could be a chunk of a space marine, like upper torso and head, or something similar. Like, without It has to have its head, though, correct? Uh, it depends on who you ask, because it's heresy if they don't. The uh, the Imperium does not tolerate AI very well, even though they use it by the uh, cult mechanicus and call it something else. They call it machine spirits, because you have these uh, all the computer systems that drive their vehicles have subroutines and they have AI within them, but they just add some prayer to it and say no 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 it's just the the machine spirit is feeling ornery today. You should do the calibrations. You should strike it four times with a hammer of ignition and re <laughs> recite the, the uh, recite the psalm and apply the unguents to appease it. Otherwise, it's going to be cranky. So you mean grease the axle shaft? No, don't just say it like that. There's more shit that's got to get done. The grease the axle shaft actually sounds inappropriate. I'm not greasing anybody's axle well, shaft. Well, if you don't speak the catechism <laughs> of awakening, of course it's inappropriate. <laughs> Jesus. And if you Who grease your that spanner? If, if you grease your axle shaft too much... You'll go. Your eyes will go blind, and you'll. Uh, yeah, you, you'll bones. offend the priest. Nobody likes that. Well, we smashed up a whole bunch of works with our body and bulk with a jump pack. What more lies for us in this dark, murky hole? Hope to see you next time. Yeah. See you guys.